You referenced how you plan your week on Sundays. Let's dive a little into that some more and talk about what is your workflow? How do things actually go from this planning process into whatever it is you're going to do? Maybe you can talk us through your day planning and planning workflow. Sure. I think on the high level, I like to front load the week as much as possible. So Typically Monday through Wednesday is when I try to get, let's just say 70% of all the work done that needs to be done in a given week so that I have Thursday and Friday to catch up on things if need to be. And if I'm done before, then great. I have an easier rest of the week and maybe I could enjoy a three-day weekend or something, right? Instead of showing up on Friday. Speaking of, we have four-day work weeks now here at AE during the summer, which is great. And everyone seems to enjoy that. So now that is in place, like I even try to front load even more and just make sure that, hey, everything is really done in the first three days. So that's like my typical approach is just to say, hey, let's front load as much as possible. So you won't find me going out on the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday night at all. So any sort of social commitments or dinner or things that people want to do with me, I just say, no, Monday through Wednesday, this is my time. I want to do as much as possible, but catch me on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, or whatever you want to do with me. So that's kind of like how I like to do things. And when I talk about like the three outcomes that I'm looking for, my three meeting goals for the week, I try to get them done Monday through Wednesday as much as possible. And so I'm in a very fortunate situation to be able to say, hey, this is how I'm going to dictate my day. This is what my day is going to look like. And this is what an ideal day looks like for me. And I try to kind of plan it that way and just say, hey, I'm most energetic and focused in the morning. So let's make sure that I align the things that I need to do during that time as well. So typically, if people I try to book a meeting with me, it's never before 11 a.m. 11 a.m. is usually when we have our daily huddles. So before that, I try to get as much work done as possible so that I'm aiming for the idea of I want to be done by one o'clock as much as possible. Now, that's not really realistic, but that's what I'm trying to aim for so that if it does happen, great. If it doesn't happen, even if I miss, then maybe I might be done by two or three and that's great too. <laughs> so that's kind of like my overall approach. And then I just try to fill in my blocks on my calendar to aid me in that direction. So that's kind of like the high level approach to it. How about you? Yeah, I definitely do front loading as well as both in the week and also in the day. And yeah, one of the benefits of the way that we do projects at AE with Scrum is I'll look at our Scrum board, I'll see what needs to be done. And usually for me, it's picking up pieces for longer term projects. That's how Scrum works. You're not doing everything at once. You're like working on what you can. And what I'll do is I will first look there and see, okay, what are my most important tasks from that? I will also layer in that things from outside the AE world. And then those tend to be later in the evening. And I just like figure out what my day is going to look like. And usually, like you said, I totally front load everything. Sometimes stuff comes up like anybody, the week and the day never works perfectly, but by sorting it out early in the morning and front loading things as much as possible, if something does blow up later in the day, it's all right because I've already done most important tasks. That works has worked really well for me. Another thing that I try to do is I look at educational opportunities. So I try to always be working on some like little course or book or something like that. And I'll try to make sure I'm scheduling in time for doing that as well. That on a daily basis. But what about longer term? Because we talk about the not just working on the urgent stuff, but the kind of like longer term stuff. So how do you layer that in? What kind of longer term planning do you do, Tan, other than just daily and weekly? So as part of the 25X productivity system, as we were designing this whole thing, one of the things we really wanted to make sure we included was how do we plan for the long term and then execute on that? And so if you break it down from like a high level point of view, it would be, hey, let's set a goal or a particular outcome that we're aiming for in the next 90 days. And then hence why we have the course 90 day goal getter, which kind of explains that process in more detail. And then we break it down into a quarterly plan, a monthly plan, a weekly plan, and then a daily plan. So we just talked about how we do things daily and weekly, but it's really derived from our monthly plan and from our quarterly plan. So to put that in perspective, like they're all related to each other, right? So for example, if the quarterly goal is to, let's just say, write a book, right? It might be a little crazy in one quarter, but let's just take that as an example. Then what that would look like is, okay, I have three months to do this. 
how do I break this down in, in a monthly segment? So in the first month, what do I do then? In the second month, what do I do then? And in the third month, what do I do then? So for example, if I already have an outline, I could say, hey, let's uh, try to get the first third done in the first month, the second third in the second month, and the final third in the third month. And then you just break it down week by week. And so the cool thing about this is that you iterate. So it's not like a fixed process because one week you might be ahead and that's great. And another week you might be behind. And so you have week by week opportunities to adjust to make sure that you stay on track. But as long as you have those milestones in place, you're pretty much aware of where, where things are at. So when you do quarterly planning, you probably will spend a few hours thinking about what's the quarterly goal? How do I make this a reality? What needs to be happening and what needs to be true month by month to make this a reality. And you have to sit down and really think through those steps. And if you cannot think through those steps, you probably don't have a good plan to execute. It's the idea that if you don't know how to do something, yes, you can figure it out day by day or doing it, but it's usually not, in my opinion, as effective as knowing, okay, if I'm trying to fix a motorcycle, I need to know the basics of what a motorcycle looks like, how it works, how the components work together before I start working on it versus, all right, I don't know anything about motorcycles. I'm just going to grab my tools and figure it out. Like that to me, it does seem very ineffective. And so when it comes to quarterly goals, it's the same way. If I have a quarterly goal, let's put some big milestones in place. I know what to aim for and then work towards that. And that's where the monthly plan comes in. Yeah. What I found really helpful for this, having a time set aside, I found the GTD weekly review for this. I found really helpful is aside from the usual stuff, like making sure your to-do list is clean, reviewing your calendar back and forth. What I found really helpful is just to spend a moment or two just making sure that you're setting aside time for those from the Eisenhower matrix, the things that are not urgent, but important, making time for those. And I've found the GTD weekly review really helpful for that. And I always have a step in there just to give some thought to that. I also, on a monthly basis, I review my journal just to see what are some kind of like action items to try and pull out of that so that I can prove things in the next month. And those together have worked pretty well. 